Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today I am privileged to be here with aerialist Stephen Williams. Hi Stephen, how are you going? Good, how are you doing? I am fantastic. Good. Welcome to Rave It Up. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, Great. finally. Thanks to be here. How many times I've, you know, I've been to Rosalind Backer Theatre, I think this is the third time now. Yep. Just for Velvet related stuff, the media call first, yep. and then the in-depth interview with Tom Oliver, and I just kept missing you. Yeah. It's, it's really unfortunate. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> But everything happens for a reason. Now we've got you here for a more in-depth interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, since this is your first time on the show, we'd love yep. to get to know you a little bit better. Sure. And I think we should start from the beginning because that only makes sense too, right? Yep. Sure. <laughs> Was Errol work what you always wanted to do with your life or did you have um, other careers you had in mind? I had, I had a few careers in mind, um, but I think circus was one that I kept coming back to because there was just so much um, variety available mm. that I kind of was unable to get bored of it you know? ah. yeah so you did a lot more yeah. circus work not just aerial stuff or yeah yeah I'd say so I did a lot of um, hand balance and acro duo work partner work um, flying and basing whatever didn't do any hula hooping like Craig Reed <laughs> no no hula hooping not yet <laughs> he amazes me like I yeah. can't even keep one up and he's no, just he's like pretty good <laughs> doing a million <laughs> and how long have you been doing aerial work for now um I'd say uh, 17 years. 17, yeah, 17 years. Jeez. Yeah. There you go. It takes a yep. long time, guys, years. Yeah. to become a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So have you always been interested in health and fitness? That's been close yeah, to your heart? I've always been sort of um, physically motivated to do stuff. I've always played a lot of sports and done a lot of physical activities. Yeah. Ah, what sort of sport yeah. did you do? Um, I played baseball when I was a little kid. played baseball for Australia. Wow. And went to the United States and played against whole bunch of different cities. Um, yeah. How old were you? Still in I school? I was or? 14. Wow. Yeah. No, I think I might have been 13. It was under 14. So yeah. Under 14. Wow. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I went on to rollerblading. I did rollerblading. Um, I got sponsored by a couple of shops and things and went in competitions. It never got paid. I wasn't full pro, but semi-pro. But obviously um, you're passionate about it and yeah. didn't mind doing it for free. Yeah. Street course stuff, which was fun. Um, what else did I do? Break dancing. I didn't really. That's random. <laughs> yeah, break dancing kind of came out of we. Well, we used to go and um, do like there's this place called Don Bosco's where we go and jump on trampolines and stuff. Oh, cool. And, um, so we'd learn how to do the flips on the ramps and stuff using trampolines, and wow. then kind of that got into acrobatics, and then I kind of went into break dancing because that was the only outlet for acrobatics at my school. Yeah. Um, was just what other kids were doing, and then um, yeah did that for a while and then came across circus and then circus kind of had you know there was handstands or partner acrobatics or tumbling or aerial there was a lot of different things that I could kind of go from one to the other and keep on the one track but you mm. know, not get sidetracked. So do you still do break dancing? <laughs> um, I do windmills at the end of the show that's probably about all I do at the oh, moment do, but yeah. I've, I've incorporated it into some acts before. That's really yeah. cool. Mm. So you've had no problems with you know getting motivated and going to the gym. <laughs> Like a no, lot of us physically, do. <laughs> physically not, no. 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 And obviously in, in your head you're mentally like wanting to go to the gym because you're just so yeah, used to it. It's yeah. like a habit now, is it? Um, I don't I don't really go to the gym that much. It's more about the activities. But yeah, but yeah I do a certain amount of um, rehab to keep myself working healthily. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of my gym stuff, but that's about it really for just straight up gym. So I think the answer that we, you know, the question that we'd all love to know the answer to, because mm. when we're looking at you doing all your aerial work, we're like, oh my God, how much training is involved? Is this like your main um, form of exercise now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't do much outside of the show, so I probably warm up for 30 to 45 minutes, and there's a, that's a warm up with a bit of resistance training and some cardio in it to get really warm. Yeah. And then that with the show, the six minute act or whatever it is, is, is my kind of, that's about it. It's enough moment. for you. That's all I'm doing, yeah. And then you get off stage and you're like, oh. Yeah, eat a chicken. <laughs> I'm <to> dead. <laughs> eat a chicken and go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so have you had any major injuries from this? Um, any dislocated yeah. shoulders from I've your had, um, aerial straps especially? <laughs> I've ha I haven't had any major, I've, I've had one major injury. Um, and apart from that, I've, you know, little muscle strains and stuff that, you know, you just rested a bit, but you keep going. But I had a surgery on my right wrist last year. Wow. I had a fragment of bone removed, and I had uh, what is that? The fibrous cartilage in the wrist sewn up and reattached. Oh. Yeah. 
Jeez, kind of how did that of, happen? Um, that happened doing aerial straps, doing the, the handstand drop at the end of my act. Yep. Um, I don't know whether it was wrapped in the wrong place or what was going on, but a, a bit of bone fractured and there was some stuff that was attached to that that needed to be cut away and reattached. So I'm guessing that um, really hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't really know. I did it for about five or six minutes afterwards and it wow. kind of... It felt and you just fine kept performing. I, well, no, it was it was um, in the warm up for a show. Thank goodness. It was actually at the theatre in warm up, um, and I kind of, you know, took my equipment off, went back to the dressing room and sat down and had a chat to people, and then I went to walk out the door and I went to turn the handle and I couldn't. It just felt really weird in the wrist. It didn't hurt yet, and then I knew that it was wrong, and then it started to throb, and then it started to hurt. Ooh. It was pretty bad. So did you have to still do the show that night? Uh, no, I didn't do the show that night. I came out of the show and then had, I went in, I went back into the show on light duties because it was, yeah, that's what I was told I could do. And then um, later on, I had to have surgery on it. Wow. Yeah. So what did they do for the show? Did they? You have an understudy well, when the, that no, sort of thing happens? No, <laughs> I. Um, we just reduced the role and I continued on doing oh my gosh. a reduced role. So. Not the full, not the handstand drop that injured it, and not a, not a couple other things. Intense. Don't mm-hmm. hurt yourself majorly, because, no. you know, well, that's, they'd be that's, screwed without you. <laughs> that's the one big one, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And is there Apart any... Apart that, I've been pretty lucky. Yeah, well, touch wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is there any aerial work that you can't do, or can you do it all now? <laughs> um, oh, no, there's loads of things that I can't do. Um, there's... Uh, how flying. humble he is about it. <laughs> things I can't do. Oh, I just know so many people that can do so many things. Um, there's a, a type of trapeze called a Washington trapeze, which has a donut in the center of it, and they balance on their head without hands. So they're freestanding, balancing on head wow. on a trapeze while it's swinging around or spinning. Um, that's how something do they that do I that? definitely can't do. <laughs> a lot of practice. So, yeah, it's m- mostly balance, right? And yeah. Yep. I've got to look that up. I didn't even yeah, know that Yeah, Washington existed. trapeze. Have a look. Yeah. And there's a lot of other aerial acts out there that are obscure and different that, that are really, really specialised. Yeah. Know. So you can do the silks and the lira and yeah, all those. normal yeah. trapeze, yeah. Not, not the Washington one. Sort of, yeah, yeah, not the Washington trapeze. Well, that's no. impressive. Yeah, but I've never, I've, I haven't done flying trapeze. Um, I've had a go at swinging trapeze, but I can't do anything on swinging trapeze. You know, not, you know. not for you. No. Yeah. no. Which one is your favourite? Um... What aerial apparatus to work yeah. with? Yeah, um, I'd say I'm most comfortable on straps. I find I find any aerial equipment that's heavy and has its own weight interesting, so mm. that it's not just you spinning. You can kind of orbit with your equipment and do a lot more interesting things. I'm kind of into things that are in that direction at the moment. Wow. Yeah. That's really impressive. It's it's mm. interesting hearing about all this because I'm doing aerial silks at the moment, actually. Mm-hmm. Sorry, when I watched you do the aerial straps, I'm like, I had a whole new... I was even more impressed. And I, you have appreci- even more appreciation when you oh. watch it when you've done similar things. You. And you're like, jeez, <laughs> yeah. those muscles. <laughs> Intense. And you know how hard it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you've obviously been in the entertainment industry and working mm-hmm. in circus for a while now. Yep. So what have you found the hardest thing about the entertainment industry? Um, I think the hardest thing is uh, keeping your life small enough to travel Ooh. is hard. Yeah? Yep. Um, so you've got to just keep traveling. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, Pick up your stuff, pack or another keep, bag. Or keep reducing, you know. Yeah. If you, yeah. You can't get kind of stuck somewhere. Um, because then you miss out on opportunities. Mm. Um, apart from that, I don't know. I mean, every job's got pros and cons. And pros and cons, yeah. but I think that's a, probably the the major one. Oh, yeah, wow. mm. interesting. Everyone has a different answer to that, yeah, which I love. I lo- I'll bet. even learn new things about the entertainment industry, and so mm. do all our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> now you are in Velvet currently. You're finishing up in Sydney today, actually. Yep, today's the today's last, our last day. day. Then you're going to New Zealand. So anybody yep. in New Zealand, go check it out. Or go have a holiday in New Zealand, that would be yeah. pretty cool. Um, just wanting to know, what attracted you to Velvet in the first place? You um, love your disco music? <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose um, I have a mutual friend with the director and we'd almost worked together a couple of times, me and the director on some things yep. um, through this friend um, and it, it never sort of eventuated and then um, when this one came up, um, they emailed and asked if I was available and I was available so I wow. came back to Australia and did all that. So they just had a look at you know what you do or did you already send yeah, something I in? Think, 
No, so I think they had a look at what, I mean people in the industry know who's out there and what they do and if a show structure comes up that says we need this, this, this and this and who's got that, they generally don't have to look for it, it it's sort of people know where to, to look because it's such mm. a small industry. Yeah, yeah. they already, they already know like, how talented you are and want you in the show. Well, it's, well, it's specialised, it's someone, if they say we want aerial straps and then someone that does chains, I know three or four people that do chains. Mm. So, you know, there's lots out there, but I know three or four people, yes. you know. So everybody has yeah. their own list of who does what. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of just comes down to that and, and what's needed at what time and who's available at that time. And if it all works out, it all comes together. Wow. Mm. Does the chains hurt? They kind of look like um, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they what? hurt, they bruise a bit. What goes through your head before you even try that? Like, um, Well... I'd Why would you want to try it? I'd actually seen someone else do it. Um, it was in a show called um, was a show called Loft by a company called Seven, uh, The Seven Fingers. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was an aerial chain act, but they used a lot of protective clothing. And then I thought, well, it takes away the, what's, <laughs> you know, crazy about it if you've got all that protective gear on. So um, my initial idea with the chains was to. To do Let's it just go shirtless. Just go for it. <laughs> yeah, to have bare skin against it and, and not shy away from the grittiness or like the, the hardcore side of it. Yeah. Because you know? um, otherwise it might be, you know, just rope and it would all feel the same. Mm. A big canvas suit, you know. So that was the first thing. But then I found that, you know, they have their own weight and centrifugal force and things and there's actual more interesting ways to use it that you can't get out of straps or silks or something that doesn't have its own weight. Wow. So it's kind of a few reasons why interesting yeah. and also it makes people go wow that looks painful that's cool like it know. does look painful yeah. like the whole time are you just like oh like trying yeah. to keep a you know normal yep. face when you're you know, going god to, this hurts <laughs> yeah trying to make people feel that kind of while they're watching something beautiful it's kind of fun yeah sitting on the edge of our seat them a little bit yeah, yeah. Now, in Velvet, they're calling you the dreamy muscle man. All How right. does that make you feel? Um, I don't... A <laughs> little bit weird or...? Um, no, because I don't really identify with the person that I'm playing on stage anyway. So, you know, it's like if you dressed up like Wonder Woman for a, a, a party or something, you'd like, as soon as you take the costume off, you don't feel like Wonder Woman anymore, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. the same. I thought it was just, just like you a dress on stage. Up party. No. <laughs> well, that means I'm doing my job okay, at least. As soon as you take your shirt off, you're just someone else. Is that, is that what happens? <laughs> no, oh, no, it's a whole host of things, you know. You get directed in a certain way and you're told, you know, have this posture and this attitude and walk this pace and this is, you know, yeah. slick, black ha- slick back hair and a leather jacket and all that stuff are kind of. Yeah, because you're not wearing that right now. (laughs) No, 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 exactly. He's a jeans and a t-shirt guy, guys. Jeans and a (laughs) t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's kind of like, it is like wearing a costume. Mm. Yeah. Never thought of it that way, especially for the aerial work. And it is fun like that as well. Like, you know, we have a laugh during some moments of the show where we're dressed up like all sorts of things. And it's just like when you would go to a dress-up party and have a laugh with your mates. Mm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm. Oh, there you go. But obviously the, the the content of the show comes before all that. Yeah. Because you know. well, even when you do the aerial straps, like I'm a guy, God, he has a very serious face on right now. I don't know, it's just <laughs> because he's like, he's concentrating and holding, but <laughs> at the same time, like it's totally different than yeah. how you are right now. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I have to maintain a stern appearance. Poker face. Yep. Yep. Top guy. <laughs> yeah. It's raining men. Yep. Yep. <laughs> And I came to the premiere of the show in Sydney mm-hmm. and the theatre was packed and I'm sure it is like every night. Yeah. Do you ever get nervous? Like it's a lot of people you're performing in front of. Um, I don't, I used to get nervous, but my nerves were about messing it up. Mm. Not about who's watching, but about messing it up in front of them. And I think, um, I think I don't, I don't fear messing up anymore because I've done it so many times and it wasn't that bad that that's kind of taken the nerves away a lot over yeah. the years. Um, oh, but touch wood again. First, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but definitely for the first few years, f- for the first years of performing, you definitely, yeah, for sure, like everyone does, you know. You don't know what the response is going to be like or you don't know if you're going to mess it up and, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, you eventually come to realise that those things don't matter. Yeah. Mm. As long as you you know what journey you're taking the audience on and you do that, whether, you know, the other stuff gets forgotten about anyway so long as they have a good time yeah 
So I guess the longer you do it, the more comfortable you are of with course. it. Yeah. Yeah, like anything. So yeah. performing in front of hundreds of people is just yeah. the norm for you now. <laughs> but I'm sure someone painting like a giant mural on a public wall would be worried they're going to mess up the, the um, proportions of what they're drawing or something, you know. Yeah, and making like sure you know, everyone's going to have their own yeah. reaction. Yeah. There's going to be haters out there, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I did notice in the show, you and Emma get quite close. Mm -hmm. Are you guys very, very good friends, I'm guessing? There's got to um, be a lot of trust there yeah, with your a partner lot of work. Trust. We're quite, um, I mean, we do have a laugh, like, yeah. you know, when it's out of work, but um, at work it's quite serious and, and everything's sort of very much um, openly communicated about if something goes wrong or if you're worried about something's going to go wrong or if something did go wrong, why and how do we prevent it next time. There's a, we talk a lot about that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I think we check in every day after the act and, and say, how's that? Yeah, good, you know, or mm. nice one, high five, you know. High if five. it's all good, if you don't yeah. get that, then you have a chat about it. And I think we get on really, really well in that way, yeah. So sure. if you feel like something's about to go wrong when you're up there, do you guys like have a code word or something? Like, I'm about to fall, yeah, please like, catch um, me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you can see it, but we are talking a lot of the time. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a lot of No, I didn't notice that. that. <laughs> um, like, uh, when she's laying down facing up and I'm holding her with her knee and an elbow, mm. I'm watching the floor and I'm usually going, yep, land. Or, you know, there's, there's things that we say or... You know, sometimes she'll say, oops, sorry about your toe, <laughs> or whatever it is at the moment, or yeah. go, um, you know, if a, if a queue runs late, we'll go look at each other and we know we're going on the next four or the next eight, you know, for the next queue or something. Mm. Like, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of that happens on stage, just with eye contact or a little, <laughs> you know, but I think have good communication we also between call you quite loudly in the air, like, and go, or ready, set, whatever, whatever the cue is. Like never release and catch like it with. kind of makes sense, but yeah, from the audience, you don't see that or no. Well, we are we are inches away from each other, so yeah, you know. So you're not talking that loud. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you can hear me anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we know the counts as well, so yeah, One, two, nothing three, deviates four. too yeah. far from the norm. Well, that's good. Mm. As I said, a lot of trust there. And yeah. it really opened your eyes because it's not just two people just doing their job up there yep. it's actually you're risking your life you don't have a crash mat underneath you <laughs> yeah yeah it's true wow mm. so how do you guys already known each other before velvet or? Uh, no we met on this project wow. actually yeah so and, um the chains we created together yeah so you had to get close quickly <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah. yeah and are you in a relationship or just i am but not with m so yeah what does your yeah. partner think about this <laughs> um well i've been doing the show for three years and I've been with my partner uh, a year and a half or a little over that. Um, so she kind of knew what I was... She's a performer as well. Oh, yeah, um, so she knows how she's, to... Yeah, she's a um, WAPA graduate, contemporary and all sorts of things. Oh, wow, WAPA. Good on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh. she's good. Um, and, um, yeah, so she understands it all. She's done theatre, but also she saw the show and knew what I was doing before we got mm. together anyway. And... And me and Emma are good mates, and it's, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. she doesn't get jealous. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think because she's done a lot of contemporary stuff, um, so she's done a lot of dance with people, like yeah. men, women, whatever, contact improvisation, whatever. It's yeah. good that you're with someone that's in the industry, so, you, you know, you both get it. Yeah, It makes exactly. it so much simpler. Yeah, yeah, totally. And most of the time... Emma wears those killer heels yep. that look very, very dangerous. Have yeah. you been hurt by them many times? Um, yeah, I've got, I can't show you now because I'd have to drop my dags, but <laughs> I've got a couple of scratches on my legs here and maybe on my back or something. Just from the heels. Yeah, yeah, and I get little scratches in here from the chains when, I, when she stands out at the end and I've got the foot. Sometimes when I go to push her out, the heel can get past it. It's, it's usually my own fault of me getting in the way. It's like, generally. sorry, yeah. I was in the way of your heels there, Emma. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But also doing aerial and she's wearing a mask and her ears are covered as well. So her hearing on her, her side is restricted. So there's... That's really dangerous. There's not much she can do, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, there's a lot of times when we land where sort of when we're landing and still holding each other, that's too wait until we both got balance and then we release you know mm. things like that where 
you know, it's not only in the air that, you know, making sure we're all right, but like during landing and, and take yeah. off times as well. Especially with yeah. her, she's got to land in heels. And they're platform heels. Oh, yeah. They're massive, those things. But she's yeah. the only person, only aerialist that I know that yeah. wears heels. Yeah. When I was like watching her, I was like, how? how? Yeah. Why? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to say, like, they look hot and I get it, but at the same yeah. time, I'm like, you're in the air. Yeah. You don't need them. Oh, it's all about how it looks, isn't it? Exactly. Especially yeah. in velvet. Come on. Like, yeah. you know, Tom wearing those huge feathers and yeah. it's about the look. <laughs> it is, totally. <laughs> or even um, with Craig with the... I, all that I, my, I take stuff. my hat off to him. What yeah. he wears, I'm like, you, you go, man. <laughs> like, love it. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> now, there is a strange scene in velvet as well where it takes mm-hmm. like a very interesting turn. Mm-hmm. Kind of like... BDSM theme to yep. it. Can you tell us about that and why it took that turn? I was um, watching it. I was like, this was like G-rated five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think the reason for that choice is up to interpretation. That's exactly what Tom said. <laughs> wow. Anybody can take it how they <laughs> want to take it. We're brainwashed. Think the same. Yeah. Um, you yeah. all have set answers. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's kind of. I mean, if you look at the. Line, and this is just my take on it and what I assume it is. That's why I'm asking um, you. You know. Get your take on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that it's a turning point where he kind of is weighing up, you know, he arrives clean cut, innocent sort of character. Yeah. And then in the end he's full of self-confidence and he knows, knows himself and he's not afraid to wear bright, gaudy clothing and he's just doing what he wants. Yeah, know? he's found himself. And I think... I think the turning point between where he's exploring and finding parts of himself or parts of the world or things that he likes or whatever, all the experiences, I think there's a turning point where he processes them and realizes what they mean to him. And through that, he's facing some kind of like demons from the past or things that he doesn't want to, to face. And that's kind of what that scene is geared towards. Yeah, it's because quite a then, dark scene. Yeah, because then after that is the... Um, staying alive and then you kind of see him reborn oh enough is enough Mm. you know you kind of see him become reborn in enough is enough after going through that kind of that's my take on it who knows yeah as tom said everybody's gonna have their own take on that Mm -hmm. scene and i do agree with you could you come out of it going god i feel good like yeah good on him yeah exactly we all need to i think if there wasn't that dark sort of scene i guess that's how could describe it it'd just be too happy chappy yeah like, it, you know yeah you know it wouldn't have any context there wouldn't be any accomplishment of any, anything you every know, story you needs like the bad yeah, part and then find the, the resolution part, yeah because yeah. that's kind of what we relate to yeah, yeah. that's a great thing about velvet mm. go see it guys <laughs> now outside of velvet you your work ranges from hip-hop through street shows to large scale festival shows of yeah. aerial and acrobatics and corporate yeah. events but what is your favorite to perform um, Still the aerial work? My favourite to perform is uh, probably about a, a 300-seater variety show. I like with that. With lots of eccentric acts and interesting people to to hang out with and work with and meet. So you get... Because you get to do heaps of different things as well? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And you get to connect I'd with... I'd say personally that would be my favourite. I think my bank account would probably tell me that, like, um, large-scale ceremonies are the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you need to add the money in. Yeah. Have you found that difficult? Is that... In your head, have you always just wanted like a plan B going, you know, this is too difficult? Mm, no, I don't think so. Um, not financially, um, physically possibly, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I'm, I'm I thinking, need a break. <laughs> yeah, I think um, if I'm worried about that sort of thing, it's definitely more about um, health and longevity, you know. Um, I'm thinking about going into, um, I don't know, remedial therapy or something oh. like that afterwards. You know, something that isn't so physically demanding yeah. to do in my... 40s and 50s. Yeah. Are you yeah. still having breaks and stuff in between? Because yeah, well, I'd say I mean, this is good for your body, but you also need a rest. Like. Yeah, definitely. I think sometimes because it is on a work schedule, not a schedule of healthy, active living, yes. sometimes it is over the top and it is the physical demand goes beyond what's physically healthy. Mm. Um, but I mean, that's the nature of showbiz a little bit. But then there's other times where, you know, you get a whole week off. Yeah. Like next week? Yeah, you get to yeah, just sleep. (laughs) Exactly. So, you know, there is extreme ends of the scale, but it all balances out. Sleep Mm. and ice bath probably. Your muscles probably need it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Other than that, I think, yeah, having that healthy lifestyle, as you said, when it's normal, yeah, it, it you would be able to just go yeah. straight into, you know, 50s and 60s and 70s exactly. like that. But, yeah, yeah something like remedial therapy or something. Got to be glad that velvet, velvet isn't on, like, every single day of yeah, for the rest well, of I your have, life. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, I have done some shows that were seven days a week. Oh, my gosh. But they were only one show a day. That's we had okay. Du- we have doubles here, but we have a day off, so... Yeah. All evens out. Depends what you're interested in and what you yeah. want. <laughs> I like the day off. <laughs> well, everybody does. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> now, is it true that you also created the resident Errol Harness show for the Australian Pavilion at the Shanghai World Expo? No, I was part well, of the creative process it. of it. Okay. Yep. Um, and so there was sort of two weeks of R&D. No, there was, a, there was three days of R&D done at Circus Oz Studios okay. and then from that R&D they picked who was going to perform it and I was picked for that and then oh, congratulations. Yeah. and that was with actually the same producer from Velvet oh, mm. worked with him more than once yeah 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 <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And how was that experience for you? Did you learn um, some really big lessons and yeah absolutely being I mean, able to travel was, the world um, we did four shows a day and we would do a, I think it was a five day a week turnaround. So you do four days work, four days on, one day off, or something like that. No, it was a seven. It was an eight day week. So we'd do seven days and one day off, something something weird like that. Um, it's been really physically demanding, then. Yeah, it was, and it was four shows a day. It was only a, it was only a fifteen minute show, but it was four shows a day of this aerial harness thing, and this harness took, I think it took about half an hour to get into and about twenty minutes to get out of. Oh so my it was gosh. Sort of an hour and a harness a day, which. Um, it doesn't sound that bad, actually, but, um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was an eight-month-long eight contract, so it was very relentless, um, and we were living in Shanghai, and, yeah, it was a fantastic adventure, a lot of lessons mm. there, yeah. Did you like Shanghai, or um, did you just want to come home? <laughs> no, I loved Shanghai, yeah, it was great. Um, some of the restaurants, there was an amazing Australian restaurant called M on the Bund. It was fantastic, but, yeah, I really liked to go out and eat, so... Shanghai was really How good. Aussie you were talking, like crocodile and... Like pavlovas. <laughs> oh, yum. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. That's even, that's better than crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And even though you've already achieved so much in your career, Stephen, what mm. else can we expect from you in the future? What, what's after Velvet for you? Um, I'm trying to... Well, I'm working on... Uh, how can I put it? I'm working with my partner on starting up a production company Ooh. that produces acts and produces entertainment. Um, Good on you. Yeah. You need people like you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> try and create jobs rather than just um, Taking them. try and get work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Make your own work, as they say. Yeah, exactly. So that's my kind of thing that's bubbling underneath the surface, you know, keep mm. that going along until I can, you know, sell it off. Yeah. Um, no expected date for that yet. It's just still. Um, we've in been the planning stages. for a year okay. already. Um, we've done a couple of shows. We did. Um, we did the. It's a fest. It's up in the valleys somewhere. A festival in the valley. <laughs> uh, and a girl died there last year. Oh. Hold on. I'm gonna come back to me. I should check on my phone. Hold the on, first interview where someone was actually taking their phone out to give me an answer. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm googling my own info. It's that, taking over. Oh. Um, that is a first, oh, Stephen. No, I remembered. I remembered. I remembered. Um. It was Lost Paradise Festival. Okay. So our first big show, um, we did some entertainment for the sixth floor um, at Maryvale. Okay. Um, but also we did uh, our first big show was uh, we produced a two-hour show at a at Lost Paradise Festival last year, last New Year's Eve. Okay. Um, and this year, while Velvet's been on, um, me and my partner have been kind of just building up stock and creating work that once I finish Velvet, we can start to sell. Awesome. Work. So, yeah, that's kind of the, the the other things that are happening. I've also had a few a few offers for contracts in London, um, which is where I used to live. I lived there for ten years. I only moved back okay. to Australia a year and a half ago to to do this show. Do you, actually, do you like Australia? Or you want to go back? <laughs> no, I I like Australia. I mean, I, I grew up in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, but I like living in Sydney. It's a lot warmer. I don't think I'd want to go back there it's too after cold being in, in in yeah exactly yeah. and after being in London for ten years, putting up with that weather for so long. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice sure. and sunny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's well, great. Well, we're going to mm. keep a lookout for this all this amazing stuff in the future for you. Yeah. It's good that you've good. got stuff planned after Velvet too. You can just yeah. straight away get into that work and. Yep. 
you know yeah sky's the limit (laughs) and what advice Stephen would you give to the listeners who might want to follow their dreams of getting into the entertainment industry whether it's being an aerialist or an actor or you know yeah I guess any um, of those jobs (laughs) I don't really have any amazing words of wisdom I, I guess what I try to do with the stuff I am into is instead of trying to do something that works for everyone else do what I do and find someone that wants to pay for that instead I like that yeah so don't look to change what you're doing look for someone who wants what you're doing I love that Mm. never had someone say that before but it's so Mm. true you gotta gotta find the passion within and then you'll change the world that way yeah that's how I see it because if you're pushing that forward then that's what's gonna come to people if you're pushing you know I'm doing this because I have to do something to make money people are gonna feel that you know Mm. Mm. When, when they can feel that you know positive energy and yeah exactly that you love what you do yeah. they want to be a part of it and then you attract people that are on that same kind of pushing yeah, forward wavelength yeah, yeah for sure that's great advice thank, thank you, you very much <laughs> and before we go if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to yeah. where should they go um they can go to well i guess the 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 company the production stuff that i've been working on is under a company called plastic soup plastic soup yep. Yeah, Plastic Soup. Interesting the name. name. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's uh, P-L-A-S-T-I-K-S-O-U-P. Oh, you like com. to be different. Change yep. the C for a K. Um, yeah, well, actually, it is, I mean, the idea is themed on, um, there's this thing called Plastic Soup, and I, I think there's plasticsoup.org or .com, but it's actually about environmental stuff with um, the oceans being full of pollution and yes. that being the plastic soup in the ocean. Um, so... We're kind of, we really like that idea, but we're also entertainment and Instagram and the influences that visual stuff is having on the arts is making the aesthetic of everything quite plastic at the moment. So we're kind of going with that. That know, is well. really, I like um, that metaphor. Yeah. yeah. So we're trying to get involved with, with that sort of side of things and we'd like to, you know, get into raising money for those types of things with our events as well. Mm. Um, but that's sort of... Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the website where I'm kind of working through at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep mm. a lookout for it. Yeah. So we'll go on social media and follow you too. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Stephen. It's been a pleasure. Mm-hmm. I, I know you're a busy guy, so yeah, no, I really okay. appreciate your time. No, it's been great. Thanks definitely, for having me. You're welcome. and definitely mm. love to have you on again in the future. So yeah, that'd be cool. Keep in contact with us and... Okay. Keep you know, keep us up to date with all those future projects. Sure, we'll We're do. really looking forward to it. Yeah. And for everyone watching, make sure to check out Stephen in Velvet. As I said, it's finishing in Sydney today, but going to New Zealand. Come to New Zealand. Come to New Zealand and just check out Stephen and all the production company. Amazing stuff that he's working on. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>